We're going to look at the disease problem. That's the name for it. It can be kind of tricky, but hopefully it will make sense out it won't be too bad. But remember, the word and when it comes to probability, if we only select one thing, it implies intersection of two events or two things. The word and means to multiply if you're selecting more than one thing. So we have these two formulas, and uh, they can be both good and bad, but uh, again, this, I would rather this said and instead of intersection uh, because it can mean either multiply or intersection depending on uh, how we look at things. So for example, if we have a Venn diagram and you're looking at a Venn diagram when only one thing is being selected, so if we wanted to find the probability of A occurring given that B has occurred, all we have to do since we've selected one thing, this and means intersection. So all we have to do to get our prob probability is say there's the intersection, point 0.1. So we get uh, point 0.1 for the intersection. And then we would divide that by the probability of B occurring. And the probability of B occurring altogether is 0.5. It's made up of two regions. So this would be 0.5 and we would be done. Our answer would be one fifth. We can see that by shrinking the sample space. What's the probability, probability of A happening, given that B has occurred? Shrink the sample space down to just B occurring. That's the 0.5. Out of that 0.5, only this 0.1 is in event A. So that probability would be one fifth. So in this case, the word and just meant find the intersection. Don't knock yourself crazy by trying to use that formula. Just go find the intersection. But now we're getting into a thing called a disease problem. And this is not exactly disease, but it's the same idea. Let's suppose this. You are a grocery store, and you get 60% of your milk from Dairy 1 and 40% of your milk from Dairy 2. Now, it turns out that from Dairy 1, 90% of the milk will still be good a week later, but 10% of the milk will be bad a week later. Uh, but at Dairy 2, it's 80% and 20%. So let's suppose we want to find the probability that we randomly select a carton of milk and given that it went bad in a week, what's the probability that it came from dairy one? That's the kind of problem we want to solve. This word and is going to be multiplication. It's not going to be intersection. Uh, even if we thought of it as intersection, we're going to end up using this formula because we need to when it comes to an ugly uh, problem like this and so we will use this application of this probability in the conditional probability formula and voila we're going to get our answer. So let's go to the next slide and see what happens. What we're saying is we want to find the probability that a carton of milk came from dairy one given that that carton of milk went bad, uh, was bad by the time a week transpired. So what we're going to do is we're going to use our conditional probability formula, which says to find the probability of A and B occurring and divide it by the probability of B. Now in the context of our problem then, we need to find the probability that this and this occurred. So that's up here. The probability of D1 uh, getting a card out from dairy 1 and it was bad. You take the probability that it was from dairy 1 and you multiply it by the probability that it's bad given that it came from dairy one. So we're gonna move this guy down here. So now we're gonna use this intersection idea, this and, and it's going to be easier if we use this idea of how to find the probability of A and B occurring. So we go to the tree diagram. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, okay, if we follow this formula, we need to take the probability that it came from dairy 1, so that's 0 0.6. So we're going to take the 0 0.6, and we're going to multiply the probability that it was bad coming from that dairy, that's 0 0.1. So we're going to take the 0 0.6 times the 0 0.1, and we're going to divide that by the probability that we got bad milk. Now, bad milk can happen in two places, here and here, and and means multiply because we're dealing with two things. So we take the 0.6 times the 0.1, so we get this, plus, or the other way for it to go bad is down here. It came from dairy 2, 
and went bad. So early on we said or means add, so we could get bad milk here or here, which is why we're going to add the two outcomes together. But the way it can get bad here is we got it from dairy two and it went bad, so we would multiply those two together. Let's move this up a little bit. So that would be that it came from dairy two, that's 40% of the milk comes from them, but it has a 20% chance of going bad. So our probability for this problem is multiply this guy times this guy, which is 0 0.06, and divide it by this is going to be 0 0.06 and this is going to be 0 0.08. If we add those together, we get 0.14. There is our conditional problem for a disease type problem. 6 over 14 simplifies to be uh, 3 sevenths, which is 0 0.42857. So this, Whoop. we're going to get that bad boy right there. That is our probability that knowing you selected a carne milk that was bad, hey, what's the probability that it came from dairy one? Whew, there it is. Well, that's just a quick glance, but let's do a problem in its entirety. So this is an actual disease problem. Read that, and then let's proceed with it. So here's the thing, when, when we get this, we'll say, oh, this is one of those goofy disease problems, it's a conditional probability, it's a little bit ugly, but what you want to do is, with any word problem, what you do is you read the problem and you tend to say, well, what is it that I'm asked to find? Well, that's here in the last sentence. So it says, if a randomly selected person tested positive, well, that's an introductory dependent clause. So let's just ignore that for just a moment. And let's read what they're asking us to find. Find the probability that they actually did not have the disease. So that's what we're actually asked to find. Find the probability that they do not have the disease. So we're going to say, well, let's find the probability that they do not have the disease. Now, the introductory dependent clause, we've seen this in geometry, that's a given statement. So given that the person selected tested positive, what's the probability they do not have the disease? So this is the way we would write this symbolically. What's probably the person does not have the disease given that they tested positive. With that in mind, we're now going to go to a tree diagram because this is how we handle situations where you're selecting two or more things. So we take the information that we just got from the problem. 3% of the people have the disease. If they have the disease, they test positive for it 96% of the time, but we'll get a false negative 4% of the time. Now, if 3% of the people have the disease, it stands to reason that 97% of the population do not have the disease. Now, they could get a false positive. That happens in 5% of the blood tests we run on these people, but they'll correctly test negative 95% uh, of the time. So, with this tree diagram in mind, now we can take our formula, the conditional probability formula, and our probability that they do not have the disease, given they tested positive, is equal to the probability that they do not have the disease and they tested positive divided by the probability that they tested positive. But now, instead of this being intersection, we should read it as and, and since we're really selecting like two things, it's the disease and then they test positive, or you could look at it as intersection, but whatever the case may be, we're going to need to appeal to a slightly different form of this. We're going to have to say, well, you know what? What we got to do now is this probability of n, n, the positive happening is really, we're going to have to go to this guy right here because we know that this is the conditional uh, formula for this dude right here. So this is what we're going to end up using. The probability that uh, they do not have the disease given that they tested positive is the probability that they do not have the disease and they tested positive, knowing that they don't have the disease, divided by the probability that they tested positive. So let's get rid of this guy. This is our roadmap right here. This is how we're going to proceed. So here's what we need. We were told that the person tested positive. So let's shrink the sample space down to just two parts of this, uh, of this graph. Let's go, and we'll go with green, I guess. But up here, they could test positive here. And if they do, we take, they have the disease and they tested positive. So we take the 0 0.03 times the 0 
So that's the 0 0.03 times 0 0.96. When we multiply that together, we get 0 0.0288. So that's the probability that they tested positive. They can also test positive right here. And that's going to be if they don't have the disease and they test positive. So we're going to take the 0.97 times them testing positive, And this is going to give us 0 0.0485. So we're going to end up with this right here. So what we've done is we've said, well, they can test positive here or here. So those are the two things we're concerned with. We are no longer concerned with them testing negative because uh, that really isn't part of what the problem is asking for. So here we go. What's the probability that they don't have the disease given that they tested positive? Well, now it's just the road map. Go find the probability that they don't have the disease and they tested positive. That's down here. They don't have the disease and they tested positive. So the probability that they do not have the disease given that they tested positive is this guy, the probability that they don't have the disease and they tested positive, divided by the total probability that they tested positive. Now here's where it gets again a little bit weird, but they can test positive in two places, either going this way and this way, or going this way and this way to test positive, or means to add. So if we can test positive here or here, we add the two together. So it's going to be 0 0.0288 or plus 0 0.0485. So there you go. There's the conditional probability for if they tested positive, what's the probability they actually had the disease? If you divide these guys out, I wrote this down over here, 0.627, that would be your conditional probability. So if they tested positive, the probability they don't actually have the disease is over 50%. It's 62.7%. There you go. Those are the lovely disease problems. Once you've practiced a couple, they're really not too bad. Make a tree diagram. Make sure you use the formula. And and in this case means to multiply the probabilities together. You'll do just fine.